But then, so when you guys get dropped, how does that affect the relationship with, with the three of you? Um, well, it really didn't because it wasn't like the first album. If it would have happened during the first album, it would have probably been devastated. But, you know, we had pretty much got it out of our system. We had an opportunity to travel the world, you know, make some money. I was able to buy my mother a house. So I kind of felt like I did everything that I set out to do. And everything else was just like icing on the cake, you know, just like in, in addition to it. So I, I kind of pretty much had the, had it, you know, almost out of my system. And then, you know what? I was dealing with the reality of knowing that, you know, that Kenny was sick and that unfortunately, it was, as hard as I would pray, you know, history at that time taught me that he might not be along, might not be around for a long time. So I had already started conditioning my, my mind to that. Like, as we were recording the second album, I kind of knew that his health was fading. Oh, and so you knew by the second, when, you knew when you were recording the second album that he, he had HIV? Pretty much. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know. For, he didn't tell me. I, I knew, but he didn't tell me. But, oh, you could you tell know, he looked. He, he looked. told me when we came back to do the third album. That, that's what he told me. What was but wrong? Prior you, you, to that, it was just a, it was just an elephant in the room. It was a secret, and you know, it was his business. I didn't I didn't want to mind it. You know, I was there for him if he needed anything, he needed help. But you know, it was some days where he wasn't feeling well enough to do too many things, and I I kind of knew that. Like at some point, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to say goodbye to this brother. You know, as, as sad as it was, like I, I had to condition myself. Yeah. And because. Because you're doing the second album as a, as an inspiration for his dad, mm -hmm. but at the back of your mind you're thinking maybe this is also for Kenny, but he exactly. hasn't said anything. Exactly, the song "New Life." If you listen to the words in that song, it's almost like he he knew he was going. You know, it's like that song. I think speaks for him because he was saying stuff like, "Write a write a letter to the president now. The dog's gonna pay my rent." It's going to be all right. Let me stay for a while. Um, I'm going to get a new life, you know. So that new life was definitely for himself. Even though he mentioned his father's name in it, I kind yeah. of like, he's talking about himself too. Because it was like Martin, Malcolm, Elijah. And I think I heard him say, Nathan, you guys, uh, that's his father's name. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, um, but yeah, but you could, at that point, you just let him, and I guess it's, it's hard unless you're in that situation to know how you respond if they're not saying anything and stuff. Yeah, you don't, I didn't want to ask him, you know, I didn't yeah. want to ask him because it's a chance I could be wrong and then, you know. Yeah. It was, you know, it was his business. So. Yeah. And then, so the album comes out, you, do, you, do you minimize your touring and your, and stuff as a result um, of his health? Or yes. you just Mm -hmm. we, we started taking less and less dates because physically it really it really wasn't possible to do so yeah and so he, he doesn't say anything and no one <laughs> says anything you just it's a lot don't. of stuff going around in the background you know people will say stuff to me like what's what's up with your boy how's he doing why, why does he look like that and it's just an act like you know why don't you ask him you know i, I don't know yeah you know? and yeah. so so oh, as this was, was going on, um, um, when did you, how after the first, second album is released that you come back for the third? What's the time frame? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Um, and so then he, he comes clean and stuff. How, how, how do you take it? Um, the three of us were sitting there and when he told us, we was just like, damn. We said at the same time, we was like, damn. And um, I didn't want to talk too much about it right there, but um, I called him the next day and, you know, told him he got my support, you know, 100 percent, you know. And um, he said that he wanted to move back to New York because, remember, he just came back up to do the recordings. He was staying in a hotel. So I said, yo, if you want to move back up to New York, you're welcome to stay at my house. So he came back to New York, moved into my house. Um, I was married at the time and I had an infant kid. So my wife was just like, nervous wreck because she didn't know anything about the disease and she wow. wanted to have different toothbrush places for toothbrushes and all this stuff and you know but um he lived with us for a few months before he um had to go into the hospital yeah wow how 
how, that, I, I can't begin to imagine how um, <clears throat> the, the challenge with, with, with that. Um, nasty. It's nasty. It's nasty. That's all I can say. When people ask me, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's nasty. It's a nasty way to go. Yeah. yeah. My, um, my dad passed away last month with uh, COVID. Oh, I've lost. Sorry for and, your loss, man. Thanks. And he was in, in, and unfortunately, he was in the hospital and he went in just for blood sugar. And then, you know, he caught the virus in the hospital. And, oh, man. You know, each one week, he was, they were saying he's fine. He's about to come home. Then it's like, oh, he's got COVID. And within a week, he just goes. And, but we couldn't visit because there was, yeah. you couldn't go visit because they just, they didn't let anyone in. And I reflected on, you know, he died within a week of, of catching this disease, but it was a slow, and we got a chance to grieve and be shocked, but then almost come over it. And I, and I wonder the difference if it was a three months or four months and, and, and stuff, but it so I can't, right. yeah, kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely always going to be different for each of us and stuff. Um, but do you guys, even when you're staying with you guys, do you, do you, any inspiration to write anything or is it just talking? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I just sent off to California on yesterday. I sent uh, a bunch of these off. <clears throat> they, like we, we were recording songs on these zip drives. I had a couple <laughs> of them and it said um, intro and it says Kenny. And um, yeah, I was using a machine called a Fostex F FD8. So I sent over two of them and they're going to transfer them for me back to wave files. And um, I probably have some good intro songs on there. Wow. Those, those were the songs during his, during his final days, like during the, like where he was doing vocals laying down. We actually do vocals with him on the couch. Cause he just wanted to continue recording My and just believe in messages and stuff. So I'm, I'm anxious to see, you know, what's on those tapes. I'll have them back in like, I guess two weeks or so. Wait, he, what year did he die? He died in 1991, a week after the September 11th incident, about yeah. a few weeks later, October 1st, two, uh, 2001. Was it 2000? 1991, 99, no, 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 2001. 2001, 2001. Yeah. I'm sorry, the only reason I ask because it's 20 years and you've not listened to them. Mm hmm I haven't, nope. Yep, yep, yep. I don't have the machine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, have, I don't have the machine to play them. So that's why I, um, I had to send them off to get transferred. And I can't find the machine anywhere for sale. I'm looking everywhere. So it's called Fostex FD8. They have another brand now, but it's not the zip drive model. But you said you finally found someone who has it so you can get them. Get uh, it out. Well, it's a tape conversion company. They, they can do, they said they can take them off to take the music off. Okay, so. okay. Wow. Um, so it, it, he, it, so he, 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 so he, he, he passes, and then the, the stuff that you record for the Fubu, did you, did, did they get released? Um, no, they never got released. Never, never. <laughs> I probably got, I probably got some stuff on here. Let me see something. Ah. Uh. Can you hear that? Yeah. Who's on the piano? Oh. Oh, what's his name? This is all I want to say. I get sad when you're not around. Oh, man, what's his name? Take your love away, I'm feeling down. Like a kid I'm embarrassed to say I forgot his name. I think it is not you anymore. It's not me. Not feel this way. I want you more every day. What is coming over me? Look what you've done, baby. You got me lying in my bedroom, waiting to be with you. You got me wrapped around your finger. Every time the phone rings, my heart skips a beat. I need your love. You with me, baby. How was it easy for him to just write like that? Mm -hmm. 
Standing in the line at the gate on my way to Los Angeles. Had a little time to spare, so I was headed out there. For some reason, I just turned the lights on. She looked at me and smiled. The girl of my dreams was leaving on another flight, and the world came crashing down. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And the world came crashing I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how, um, how much we miss the music, but it's amazing how effortless it seems like. It. Were you guys singing background or how, what, what happens to the... Kenny sung on those two songs that I just played. He did the backgrounds on those because those were just... We were just writing at the time, and um, yeah, just go ahead and go and knock it out. They weren't not even really finished songs right there. Well, what about the production? Who was producing it? Um, those tracks were presented to us. I want to say, um, let me see, what's the guy's name? Um, Kenny Kenny Love, somebody named, <clears throat> somebody named Kenny Love, and also. Um, Rashad Smith at Tumbling Dice. He did a lot of stuff like Biggie Smalls. And... Yeah. So what would they would do is they would give you the sort of beats and then you, mm -hmm. and then you'd he would write over over them. Yeah. Okay. We'd put it on like two tracks of tape and then layer all the vocals underneath it like that. Wow. So you've kept them for all these years with them. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you would you guys ever planning to? You know, after Kenny passed, did you then think that's it? Inch was gone. There's nothing else because he was our lead singer. He was our main writer. That's it. Or you, you and Jeff, what did that's, you guys decide to do? That's 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 pretty much how I felt. In the back, in my heart, I didn't want the legacy of Intro to be um, Intro stopped recording and doing music because Kenny died. I didn't want that to be the final, you know, story at the you know the end. Kenny died. The end. So um, we tried putting new members in the group and that just didn't work out. It always would end up in some type of argument because they didn't understand the business. They thought they were coming to the group and automatically like, we're gonna be buying them cars and all of this stuff. I'm like, nah, that's not how it works. You know, you, we go, we do shows and even though you're a new member in the group, I'm still gonna split the money equally. I'm gonna make the same amount of money as you make. And um, I would tell them like, okay, this is how much this show is for. And sometimes you go to do a show and then the promoters get a little janky on you. They always have some type of story. <clears throat> and um, oh, I had to spend a little bit more here. So it was actually this amount of money. And they would give that to me. Now I already told the guys in the group, okay, this is how much you're going to get. And I would always make sure that that's what they got. Even if it meant that I had to walk away with less money, I always bit the bullet because I was pretty much handling the business for the group. Yeah. But um, it just didn't work out. And um. Then me and Jeff just started going back out by ourselves, and um, I can honestly say at the beginning of doing that, the shows were horrible. They were horrible. I, just the two of you? Yeah, I, I enjoyed going out, and I enjoyed the fact that people was calling and trusting us to come out, like you know, without Kenny. But um, yeah, the beginning shows were horrible. They were horrible because we weren't rehearsing, and we was pretty much learning as as we would go. But that kept going and kept going and people kept booking us and booking us and then we started doing rehearsals. And, you know, if you see our show now, of course we're gonna miss Kenny Green, but I always put it like this. Like if you if you, if you you open a can of soda, right? Say it's a, it's a it's an orange soda and you pop it open and you taste Coca-Cola, then it's a problem, you know? Yeah. But I think like with the intro shows, if you look in there, hear something from intro, you're gonna, you're gonna get that experience now. And we still have Kenny on the backing tracks and stuff like that. So we try to still bring him, you know, into that element and stuff. But it's, it'll never be the same. It'll never yeah. be the same. Yeah. 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 No, especially with that, his, his um, vocal talent. Yeah. Yeah. But then the, um, but then we also get the, um, the, the news that Jeff, he posted and says yeah, he's, he's left. He's no longer part of it. Um, and so, 
what does that just mean for yourself? Because now there's two of the original members are no longer there, just leaving you. What does that then mean? One of the things that bothered me about that, and I've never, I haven't spoke about it. I didn't make any comments on social media or anything. He never said why he left. So it kind of had people asking me what, what happened? Like, what did you do? Yeah. And I tell him, I was like, what, what did I do? I got us two major releases in 2021 coming up and I paid for the documentary myself out of my pocket with the director. I didn't ask Jeff for any money. So I think at the end of the day, I think Jeff started feeling like if either he was working for me or I wasn't including him in certain business deals. And there's a reason why, you know, you just can't keep doing certain things and expecting the same results. And, you know, I just chose to start doing business on my own. And it was pretty much him that told me to do that. He said, he said, you need to start acting on your ideas before somebody else does it. Because there were some things I was doing. And then I looked back and then he'd be doing it and doing, you know, and I was like, so I kind of, he, he departed in the past. So I prepared myself this time. You see on his rant, he says, um, um, I told him I don't want to be in a documentary. I'm expecting when a documentary comes that I don't see myself in here. How could there be an intro documentary without him in it? So prior to us even filming, I had him sign a release form. So he will be in a documentary. And, um, you know, I wish him all the best in his retirement. Yeah. Yeah. But then what does that mean going forward? Because COVID will, will be over one day and mm -hmm. you know, groups are going to be back on the road. Do you then think, you know, touring becomes a problem or what do you then end up trying to do? Well, up, up until now, like just yesterday, somebody sent me like this. I get like singers like almost like a couple a week, like a couple texts a week with people, different singers and stuff like that. And I'm actually have an offer for Valentine's Day with um, it's a guy named Mo who cousin with Horace Brown. He's like, yo, I, I know what happened. I know people calling you. If you want me to come out and do the backgrounds for you, I will. Yeah, and I just was honest with him. I said, right now, I'm just focusing on the documentary and the two album releases. But as time does move forward, I know I'm going to have to think about um, bringing somebody else on the road with me. Cause the last time Jeff left, what I did was I teamed up with the Lost Boys, me and Mr. Cheeks. We went and we toured for two years. We, wow. did, we did a tour called The Perfect Blend where we were on stage the same time the whole show like he's on the show on the stage during let me be the one and ribbon and i'm on the stage with lights camera action and you know renee and stuff it's like he do a song then i do a song then we have like five songs together we throw those songs in there so you know that's a conversation that i'll probably go back to mr cheeks and see if he wants to do that you know because I, I do miss touring i'm not gonna yeah. lie i miss everything damn i miss you know, I mean, it's going to sporting events and yeah, 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 we all, as we all do. That's, that's a great question, man. It is actually one guy from the UK, um, <clears throat> that that I want that I want to work with. I know it's, it would be almost impossible to um to uh have a, a artist in intro from the UK, but this guy is so dope. His name is Levon Thomas. Okay, no, I, don't I think that's his name. The Bond Thomas, let me see, view profile, is that him? Um, no, that's not LeVon, it's not LeVon. <laughs> I'll find his name. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really dope singer, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to um, Richard from Grapevine and he, he, he said, wouldn't it be cool if you got someone like Horace Brown, because you mentioned that, you know, because who <clears throat> also had a style of his own, but, you know, hasn't come up with anything and, and so... Oh. Horace was in intro for like a month. Oh, are you kidding me? We have, we have like we have like maybe five songs recorded with Horace Brown. Oh. Me, my girlfriend, me and Jeff. We have yeah. Horace is like like my brother. When he comes to New York, he's right here in my studio. He's in North Carolina right now. But um, yeah, okay. we, that, that was that was definitely a um, that was a, definitely a good look. And it was me that was like. You're too big for this, man. You know, you, you, you're an entity of your own. You just, you know, Horace Brown. But that's, that's an option as well. Like Horace Brown and maybe Kenny Whitehead from the Whitehead Brothers. Hey, I'm supposed to be interviewing him very soon, shortly. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> that, he would be a good pick. Like Horace and Kenny, that, that, that would be like the dream group for me. But then yeah. again, because, you know, when you think about what um, 
LSG did. I mean, okay, Don will always say that Lucy Pearl were the first sort of super group of ex stars coming together, and then LSG was really massive. In a sense, you have the banner of, of intro, but you do have very prominent names that um, you're not filling Kenny's shoes, but they're coming up with a very different identity, which would definitely, you know, which would definitely, definitely make a massive difference. Getting booking halls, you know, uh, booking, you know, intro featuring, you know, um, yeah. Horace Brown and and and, Ke- and Kiko and White, but it's for that stuff to happen. What what you know. What what needs to happen is it people need to either three or two they both need to see the bigger picture or does it become um, is it easy to to pull off? Um, it could be. It depends on their frame of mind, though. You know, I I, I couldn't really speak for them. Yeah. Um, I'm not a takeover type of dude, so I would give them the opportunity to do whatever they wanted to. I always tell people to get in where you fit in. But yeah. sometimes people want to do more than just getting in where they fit in. And I'm the type of person I allow you to do as much as you can, but it has to make sense. You know, yeah. like we had one guy in the group and we'd sing Ribbon in the Sky. He wouldn't sing it, the intro version. He would still sing it, the <laughs> other version. And I used to get on him all the time. I was like, man, you have to sing it. People come into the show to hear the Ribbon in the Sky from intro. You know, yeah. it's like, look, I can't, I can't. I can't be Kenny Green. I got to be myself. And I was like, you're fired. <laughs> That's what we need. We need that. We don't need you to be yourself. You be yourself. Yeah. Else. And yeah. he took a couple swings at me. I'm always getting swung at because, you know, I'm really sure when it comes to business. I don't cheat people. I don't take money from anybody, but I don't let that. I don't deal with a lot of nonsense when yeah. it comes to the brand of intro. You know, I, I run it like Kenny would have ran it. You know, we have a brand to uphold. The, the integrity is really important. I mean, you know, Queen, we've got a, a documentary to expect in June, you said? Oh, the documentary's coming in March. Oh, March, okay. The soundtrack. Mm-hmm. okay. And then in June, which is Black Music Month here, they're going to release another intro album. And that's going to be of remixes and maybe a couple songs that's in the vault that were unreleased. I may have to fly to Los Angeles or do a Zoom with the people in the studio and kind of pick the songs because at this point, I'm the A&R for the project because the project, the person who was the a r was let go about a month and a half ago. So okay. Your vice president was like, you're it. So, you know, I do Zoom calls with her. I have my next call with her is on Tuesday. With the folks so there. would this be on Atlantic? Um, it's going to be on Rhino. Warner Music Group, but... Okay, Atlantic is the phone call. Rhino, yeah. So that's more their... their um... Aretha Franklin's and... Yeah, they're old, uh, yeah. Okay, so they 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 definitely they they definitely push okay they definitely push out. Where is the documentary going to be streamed or released? Um, that's up to the film com- company right now. I know it's probably going to be either Netflix, Amazon Prime, or something. It's uh seventy two minutes long. It's a full feature film. Like I got, I watched the second cut two nights ago. Okay. First time I watched it, I cried three times. Wow. As soon as it came on, like within the first minute. I was crying. Um, in the middle, towards the end, my daughter caught me crying. She's like, Dad, why are you crying? I was like, I'm not crying. She's like, no, you're crying. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm happy. And she didn't understand. She's five years old. <laughs> crying because you're happy? You know, I, I cry because I want stuff. You know, I want to be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it was it was it just the, the thing, what, what, what was it, the, the most emotional part for you? Um, like when it first came on, <laughs> like just seeing it come to life, you know, okay. after the, so we've been working on it for a year and a half. We started before the COVID thing. We got a lot of the interviews done. And um, so really got Donnell Jones in there, Big Daddy Kane, Coco from SWV, Mr. Cheeks, okay. um, Sadat X for Brand Nubian. They have all in there. So seeing them pop on, seeing the friends and my dad's in there. You know, wow. Just, okay. Kenny's mom is in there, his sister. Wow. Really, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tearjerker, but it's, it's good. It's a really good, it's really good. Yeah. The other question was, are you guys still cool with Eddie F? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I speak, I speak with Eddie quite often. He's trying to put me up on some of those investment things, like the Bitcoin stuff. And <laughs> Bitcoin, he's like yeah. the original Apple stock people and stuff like that. So he kind of like coached me into getting into the stock market and stuff like that. 
and um my sister, right? <clears throat> I see another I see another gym with you that um a lot of, like a lot of people don't know. Even Jeff didn't know like three, three, four years. Like I, I have a job, right? I got a day job. I'm a New York City police officer. I work for NYPD, but I, I'm retiring in July. What? So now I will yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I retired July first of this year. And um I did the whole I did the whole 17 years. I didn't have to do 20 years because of the military. So I could retire at 17. So for the past 17 years, I actually been a New York City cop and pretty much nobody knew about it in the industry. I can say it now because I'm getting ready to retire and I'm not really out on the street like that anymore. But um, yeah, man. You gotta, well, was that was that because you had to or why did you do that? I, I, I had to, I had to. That was in 2004. That was three years after Kenny died. Yeah. And um, the emergence of hip hop, not one phone call to come out and do shows. Um, I wasn't hearing the songs on the radio anymore. I figured that was the end of um, professional music. I still had my home studio, and you know, like people would come in and I would um, do projects with them. But as far as having a real job and feeding my family, I, I had to get a job. Wow. You know? So that's almost done. My sister talked me into that. She's a detective, and she actually her last day of work is February twenty eighth. Yeah. So, okay, so she, okay. But then when you joined the police, did they know who you were? Did they know by intro? A couple of people here and there would, would make it out. Like certain places I would work, somebody would come up to me and say something. Or sometimes people would say, you look like the guy from intro. <laughs> like then somebody asked me, like, do you dance for intro? I was like, <laughs> you know. Like, okay. Like, nah, somebody, somebody asked me that before. And then I, I just keep it moving, but... um. But then how was, how was, how was the life change? Because you're going from, you know, video soul and, and all this stuff to. It was, it was, it was hard. It was, it was hard. It was, it was, hard. It was a little, some, some days I could say it was quite depressing, but you know, it, it paid the bills and um, the neighborhood that I worked in wasn't like a, a black neighborhood. So nobody would ever make me out. Like, <laughs> Okay. But handcuffs on so I'm like, yo, your buddy from Metro, you know, nobody yeah. knew, nobody knew me in the area that I worked. Yeah. Wow. But it, was that more? That seems like a more dangerous job than being in in in, in Iraq. Um, it actually is. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. It's it's been it's been uh it's been pretty interesting. Yeah. Wow. So it, it, I guess it's very fascinating that with all the talent and all the music and all the stuff that mm -hmm. and all the royalty checks and stuff, it just it dry it, it on it, publishing it doesn't you know it it there's a, there's a limit to how much. What that yeah, can do. Yeah, a lot of people don't think that, you know, when people think like the recording artists, they think of like Rick Ross, Jay Z, Puff Daddy, you know, that's the, Drake, that's yeah. the exception. That's the exception. Like 95% of us really need to have real jobs or, you know, they're pretty much dependent on other people and, or going out every week making money from shows. And unfortunately, right now, there's no shows. So there's actually some artists that I actually have to help out. You know, I actually send money to artists knowing that one day, you know, they're going to be able to go back out and repay me. But, you know, got to, got to do it. Did, but when you do shows, could the shows cover the bills pre-COVID? Um, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. They could. They could. But, but you, you just advised, look. Medical they... benefits, though. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have medical benefits. Like, I, I have four children. I had three boys and a girl, and they all need medical coverage. So without me having a, a real job, every time they go to the doctor, that's money out of my pocket. So I needed to do it for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's I not like I was a senior in college right now, and uh, he goes to St. John's University, and that's that's a whole nother bag, <laughs> you know. So I got to yeah. work and pretty much, you know, get it. Wow. <laughs> That's what. Oh, okay. I mean, that's that's really fascinating. It's, it's amazing I, that I would you love to be able just to stay down here and just don't, and that's it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's not that's not the real deal. <laughs> well, I guess finally, just as we wrap up, mm. after the, the the release of the of the album in June, documentary in March, and you mm. and you retire from the police force, are you going to try and then start releasing music that you could start earning income from? Oh yeah, it's gonna be on and popping after July first. Friday, July first. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on and popping. Yeah, I already said I'm gonna have the tour bus parked outside. 
I'm gonna oh, so you're gonna be on the on the road with new members, new music, everything. By that time, the documentary would have kicked in. The new album would have been out for about a month, and then it's gonna be time for me to get out and promote it. And I'm ready. I'm ready. Wow. Yeah. 